It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Welcome to the program. Today we're going to talk about faith and how faith works. One of my favorite quotes comes from Smith Wigglesworth, his book, Ever Increasing Faith. He said, anyone can be changed by faith no matter how they may be fettered. The word fettered just simply means bound. That means the enemy cannot make a bondage that your faith cannot break off of you. In other words, we have faith in God. We have faith in the Word of God. We also have faith in the blood of Jesus and faith in the name of Jesus and faith in the power of God. And we are designed to live by faith. God's plan for our lives is to walk by faith, live by faith, overcome by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 uses the words by faith 20 times. By faith, by faith, by faith in one chapter. In other words, learning how to live by faith is a supernatural way that we as believers live. And we feed our faith on the Word of God. Today's message is a very simple message, yet one of the most powerful messages you'll ever hear. I actually learned these four steps from Kenneth E. Hagin, and we call Dad Hagin. And he said the Lord gave him these four steps from Mark chapter 5 and verse 34, where Jesus told the one that is your blood, he said, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. And in that verse right there, Mark chapter 5, verse 34, and actually from 24 down to 34. These verses tell you the four things that this woman did that actually enabled her to receive healing from God. Dad Hagen said the Lord told him, if anybody anywhere will take these four steps, they will always receive not only what they need from God, not only healing, but anything else. He said, if you'll take these four steps, Wow, I wrote that down, went over it for many years. These four steps on how to receive from God. Today, I encourage you to take some notes, pay attention to this message, and I dare you to take some steps of faith and receive the supernatural. Receive healing, but not only healing, anything else. Let's go right into the message. It said that a nuclear bomb or nuclear power, you cannot just make it out of anything. Like you can't get enough Fritos to do it or Cheetos. Come on. You can't get styrofoam and do it. In other words, you cannot make it out of any substance. That a nuclear bomb is made out of a substance that they said, they call it uranium-235. Uranium-235. That's why many countries cannot even have a nuclear bomb because they don't have any uranium-235. Once you get that substance, uranium-235, then it must be enriched. Then you got to learn how to activate it. And what they like about uranium-235 is it's the one substance that you can activate it when you want to. All right, let's try this side of it. It's the one substance you can activate it when you want to, not when it wants to. It's the one subject you activate when you want to, and they said, and you can activate uranium-235 in a picosecond. Picosecond, and I didn't even know what a picosecond was. A picosecond is a P-I-C-O, picosecond. <laughs> right? Well, I didn't know what a picosecond is, right? But a picosecond, if you want to check it out, you know how fast a picosecond is? They said it's one million of a millionth of a second. Faster than you can blink your eye, uranium-235 can be activated and release power. Blink your eye. What do you think about the resurrection power of Christ? What do you think about the substance of your faith? 
Come on, blink your eye. That's how fast. Come on, that's how fast power is released towards you in your life, in your body. Come on, in every area of your life. Go ahead and blink your eye again. Go like this. Go, my God. In a picosecond. Come on now. Come on, cancer has to leave your body in a picosecond. Arthritis, leave your body in a picosecond. Depression, leave your mind in a picosecond. Come on now. And money come into your house. Come on, in a picosecond. The blessing of the Lord in a picosecond. I think you ought to laugh. Come on, because the devil... Come on, the devil will tell you it's going to take a long time for you to come out of that hole. It's going to take you a long time for you to come out of that problem. God said, in a one million of a millionth of a second, I can turn your life around and set you free. In one million of a million of a second. Whoa, man. Whoa, glory to God. <laughs> you ought to laugh a few minutes. Come on now. The power that raised Christ from the dead is in every facet of redemption. Yes. From the blood to the name to the word. Yes. Amen. Let's try that one more time. It's the word of his power. And the blood of his cross is the blood of his resurrection. Let's try that again. I said the blood of his cross has now become the blood of his triumph and his resurrection. So the power that raised Christ from the dead is in his name, in his blood, and in his word. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Go ahead and blink your eye a couple of times. Say, Boy, things are changing fast around here, man. Go ahead and blink your eye. Oh, my God. Amen. That whatever shackle or bondage that the enemy has tried to put on your life, through faith in the blood of Jesus, through faith in the word of God, through faith in the power of God. In other words, you activate that. Come on, oh, that yeah. substance, that faith. Come on now. You say, well, I wonder how much it's going to take. Listen close. Let me tell you how much it's going to take. They said that one pound of uranium-235 has more power than a million gallons of gasoline. One pound, you know how much one pound is? The size of a baseball. One pound can run a nuclear submarine for 25 years. One pound. Y'all still here? And when Jesus said, I'm going to give you a little bit of this stuff come straight from heaven, he said, you don't need a lot of it. I'm going to give you a little bit of it. He said, but if you got a little bit of this stuff right here, he said, it's the same stuff I made the world with. It's the same stuff that raised Christ from the dead. He said, I'm going to get this call the God. Shout a little bit. Ha ha ha. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't act like, well, I already heard the faith message. Let me tell you something, camel breath. You don't have a clue. You don't have a clue when you have faith in God and the measure of faith God has given to you. Come on, what's in that measure? The substance is in there to heal your body, set you free. Come on, in a peak house. Come on, look at somebody around you and say, you know what a picosecond is. You know what a picosecond is. What do you know that? Come on and blink your eyes and say, I have faith in God. I have faith in the blood of Jesus. I have faith in the word of God. I'm expecting a miracle. I'm expecting a miracle in my body. I'm expecting a miracle in my life. Sit down just for a minute. Ha ha. Ha ha. One man or one woman that believes God. Faith in God. The most valuable thing you can give to your children or your grandchildren is faith in God. 
Make sure they understand about the faithfulness of God and the power of the word of God and the power of the blood of Christ, the power of the blood of Jesus. That's the most important thing you can make sure they get. Come on, ain't concerned about who gets the boat and who gets the car. Come on down, who gets the TV. We want to find out who got the faith. That's what we want to find out. Who got the faith? That's what we want. Yes. <laughs> My daddy didn't leave me a lot of stuff, but he made sure I got faith in God. Come on down before he left this world. He wasn't too fancy, but I guarantee you the Bible was out, and Mama was praising. She's slinging blood everywhere, and if you knew me and the family, you'd know why. In other words, there is a Redeemer. Come on, God is a Redeemer. He is a Deliverer. Hallelujah. He will turn things around in your family, in your life, in your mind, in your emotions. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I love to watch the Apostle Paul because he preaches faith the same way Jesus does. Amen? Paul said we have the same identical spirit of faith. If you ask Paul, what do you have that keeps you from collapsing with the adversity that you're going through and the disappointment that you face? What keeps you from quitting and giving up? Paul says right there in 2 Corinthians 4, 13, we have, come on, he's saying that right in the middle of trouble, right in the middle of a problem. He said, let me tell you what I got, and it's one thing you can't take from me. Come on, they can take a car, they can drive off with something, but they can't take that spirit of faith. Paul said, let me tell you what I got. We have the same identical spirit of faith. That God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, a sound mind. We have the same identical spirit of faith. That's what we got. We believe and therefore we speak. Simple as that. We believe and we speak. And I don't know why people think that's so difficult to understand. We believe. Come on, I believe God. I believe the word of God. After I believe, what's the next thing I got to do? Get your mouth moving. I've had to talk to myself on many days. Like, what is your problem? Can you get your mouth moving or not? I'm not talking about your coffee. I'm talking about the Word of God in your mouth. Let's try that again. I said, I'm talking about the Word getting in your mouth. Can you get your mouth moving? Come on, because if you can't get your mouth moving, the mountain's just going to keep staring at you. So Paul said, we believe and we speak. So what is believing? Believing is simply an attitude of faith. If your faith does not affect your attitude. All right, well, we better try this out over here. I know we don't have no attitude problems in here tonight because we not only have talented people, but people that are very pleasant. Listen, your faith gives you a boldness, gives you a confidence. I love the book by uh, Viktor Frankl when he said this, a Nazi concentration camp survivor. And the persecution in a Nazi concentration camp was not just physical abuse, mental, emotional abuse. He said, and many of the people that died in the concentration camp did not die from physical abuse. He said, many of them literally became hopeless and committed suicide. Imagine the devil pushing you to where you want to kill yourself. I heard John Osteen say this many years ago because he was always afraid of heights. (laughs) And he said, I had a great fear of heights. So he said, he went way up on top of a building and he said he got up there and boy, he was just scared and shaking. He said, and the voice came to him. The devil said, why don't you jump? Why don't you jump? He said, oh, man, just fear came. The devil came. Why don't you jump? He said, shut up, devil. You jump first. I ain't jumping. (laughs) So the devil tells you, kill yourself. You say, shut up, devil. Kill yourself first. I ain't killing myself. (laughs) We got enough people in line to do that. Why do you want to do it to yourself? Listen, so, so Victor Franco said, Victor Frankl said what? The last of all human freedoms is the ability to choose one's own attitude regardless of circumstances. 
All right, I'm gonna go over that one more time because I know some of you are nodding your head, but I, I can't see any registration on your eyes. You're like. <laughs> so if, if this is taking longer than necessary, you're the problem. <laughs> the last of all human freedoms is the ability to choose one's own attitude regardless of circumstances. All right, let me stick good. right here. Nancy said it. I got one amen from Nancy. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> the last, all right, we're working with this now. Words have meanings. The last of all human freedoms is the ability to choose your attitude. That's right. Yes. Regardless of circumstance. Regardless. So he said in the middle of that, <laughs> torment and torture he said, while others decided to get hopeless, he said, I decided I will survive. And that attitude alone kept me alive. Are y'all still here? Come on, Vicki Sharon sitting here and her dad just had a, had a terrible accident and uh, he was riding a riding lawnmower and he's uh, getting a little bit older and so he was not as strong as he used to be and the lawnmower uh, went over and rolled over on him and he rolled all the way down into the lake and the lawnmower rolled right on top of him. And he was in the lake with this, what, thousand pound riding lawnmower on top of him and he just had his head, just his mouth and his nose above the water. And that's all they had above the water. He was hollering. His wife couldn't hear him. Nobody could hear him. He was that way for one hour. 80 something years old, underwater. And he said, Vicki went to see him recently and he's recovering. But um, he said, I was there just barely able to breathe. And I thought, this is it. This is the end. He said, but at some point I decided I will not die. See, he could have just given up. Nobody's ever going to come and help me. All right, let's go over this again. I said, nobody's going to come and help me. Come on, ain't nobody going to come and help me. I might as well just give up. Ain't nobody coming to help me. Come on. And he just let his head go underwater. That's all. It's just enough room to breathe. Come on. So finally he said, I decided I will survive. Yeah. Maybe a song like that, but I don't know exactly what it is. <laughs> So he said, there just with his nose and his mouth above the water, he found a few rocks, propped his head up so he could breathe, just kept hollering. <laughs> Finally, after an hour, a boat came by and the guys came over there and helped him, got him out, took him to the hospital, and he's alive today. Why? His attitude, come on now, I said his attitude. Don't let the devil poison your attitude and make you quit and give up and say you're a failure and you're worthless and you'll never make it and you don't have what it takes. You say, I believe God. I have faith in God. I have faith in the blood. God loves me. Come on, Christ died for me. Come on, so regardless of where life is pushing you and the pressures you may feel, I still believe. And after I believe, I speak. All right, listen close. You need to hear your preacher's voice. Come on, but your mountain needs to hear your voice. Come on, you need to hear your pastor's voice, and you need to hear what the Lord is telling you tonight. But your situation needs to hear your voice. All right, I'm going to try this side over here. I said, you need to hear. Come on, you're sitting here hearing the word. But this is not the end of it. What did she do after she heard the word? This is not the end of it. What you going to do after you hear the word? Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. 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 Acts chapter 25, the apostle Paul. Come on, it says it's the third day of a 14-day storm. Paul said, we have the spirit of faith. He said the same spirit of faith. Same. I'm glad he said the same because he's talking there, quoting from the psalmist David. And man, if there's anybody that had an attitude of faith, man, I mean, you can have an attitude of faith. You know, because people sit with an attitude. They look at you with an attitude. They walk with an attitude. You can, you can tell an attitude when you see it. And when you're preaching, if anybody got any preachers in here, you're like, oh, that's some attitudes in here today, boy, I can tell you. 
Especially you start taking off and you say, oh, a bunch of attitude just showed up. Listen. I'm looking for somebody to come on that and say, I'm going to change my attitude and line up with the word of God. Come on now. I believe you can change your attitude in a pico second. Go ahead and blink your eyes. Say, mine's changing right now. Amen. My daddy said, you can get glad in the same britches you got mad in. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, no matter what you're dealing with, that attitude. And he said, the same thing David had. So imagine David. Come on. When it says he encouraged himself in the Lord. How are you going to do that? Well, you're just going to have to talk to yourself. Come on, look in the mirror. David would look in the mirror and he'd say, my soul. Come on, my soul. My soul, why are you cast down? My soul, come on, just look in the mirror and talk to yourself. Come on, tell yourself, don't look down while I'm talking to you. Look at me right now. My soul, I'm talking to you. Because some people got the moods, you know, the mood of this and the mood of that. How many ever had a mood on Monday and a different mood on Tuesday? And how many ever got one of them mood rings when you were younger? Some of y'all in here old enough, get you a mood ring. And they, you ever want to have a child, get you a mood ring. And so it would turn different colors based on your mood. They'd tell you what mood you had. And before you talk to people, say, let me see your ring. I would find out what kind of mood we're dealing with here. And then other people say, well, that's just the way I am. But not if you're in charge of your attitude. Yeah. Hallelujah. Norman Vincent Peale said, the most difficult person I've ever had to deal with is myself. Right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't look around. You know, we like to blame other people. I tell you, they've just been giving me trouble. If you want to see who's been giving you the most trouble, just go look in the mirror and say, I need to talk to you right now because you have been giving me some trouble. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I believe I speak in attitude, quoting from the psalmist David, kill a lion, kill a bear, kill a giant. Come on, when it came time to give, he led everybody. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He said, I believe I can outgive everybody. Come on, you ought to look at the people on your row and say, I believe I can outgive everybody on this row. You might want to change rows if you need to, but I mean, say, I believe I can outgive everybody on this row. Just look around and say, I'm going back to the back. So then you might have trouble outgiving yourself. But anyway, so an attitude like David, come on. An attitude, and it says everybody's ready to kill him, right? Yeah. He blessed them, he helped them, killed giants for them, and as soon as he got in trouble, they said, let's just kill him. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, well, if people are that way, wow. just write it down, they are that way. <laughs> Don't say if, they is. I mean, that's the way it is. Y'all still here? <laughs> yeah. Amen. He could just say, well, if people are that way, I'm just quitting the ministry. Well, you better quit right now. Listen, instead, David just said, what did he do? Encouraged himself in the Lord. How many of you like to encourage yourself in the Lord? Amen? Amen? Come on, if you can't encourage anybody else, at least you can encourage yourself. Say, I need to talk to myself. Come on, say, I'm washed in the blood. I'm redeemed. Amen? Amen. And so Paul, it says this, third day of a 14-day storm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He said, everybody, cheer up. Stood by me tonight, the angel of the Lord. Come on now. <laughs> Whose I am and whom I serve. He said, and I believe God. Yes. Amen. Yeah. You say, yeah, but he had an angel show up. Well, if you read over there in 1 Peter, it says we have a more sure word of prophecy yeah. than even the angels that came. Yeah. You ought to open your Bible and say, that's better than an angel coming and seeing you right there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Everybody cheer up. Come on. People throwing stuff overboard. Everybody cheer up. Come on, look around and say, everybody cheer up. Everybody cheer up. Say, why? How you, why are you going to cheer up? I believe God. Yeah. Well, what do you believe? It shall be as he told me. Yeah. Anybody believe it shall be as he told you? Yeah. Come on, what has he told you? Do you know what he told you? Do you know what the word says about you? It shall be like the word said about you. Yeah. And you believe it. Come on now. And he said, it shall be. Yeah. Listen, listen close. Because he not only got the word, 
but then he declared that word. That's the spirit of prophecy right there. You can prophesy your future in the middle of a storm. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries. The simplest definition of faith is to act like the Bible is true. The moment you act on the Word of God, God makes Himself responsible for your results. Come on, so regardless of where life is pushing you and the pressures you may feel, I still believe. And after I believe, I speak. Come on, you need to hear your pastor's voice and you need to hear what the Lord is telling you tonight. But your situation needs to hear your voice. Do you want to have faith that gets results? Order the four CD set, The Winning Combination, and the books, Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural, and Never Run at Your Giant with Your Mouth Shut. Your gift of $30 or more will help Mark and Trenna train pastors around the world. Order today. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Well, I trust you enjoyed the message today. It's one of my favorite messages and changed my life many, many years ago. One of the most powerful passages of Scripture is the one with the issue of blood, Mark chapter 5, verse 24 through 34, where Jesus said, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. In other words, he said it wasn't just God sovereignly choosing, it was her faith that made her whole. And those four steps, number one, she said it. Number two, she acted or she did it. Number three, she received the power of God. Number four, she testified or she told it. Those four steps, of course, I learned from Dad Hagen. He said the Lord told him, if anybody anywhere will take these four steps or put these four principles in operation, they will always receive not only healing, but anything they want or need from God. Not only healing, anything else. In other words, faith works the same in every area of life. So I encourage you to write these four steps down, go over it, encourage you to get the messages and listen to them again and again, and thank God for His Word. We're learning how to live by faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So God bless you, and I'll see you again next time. Many of the nations we go to have very little access to the teaching of the Word of God. So we not only go there, but we translate and distribute our books so that pastors and leaders can continue to feed their faith. The Lord continues to open the doors in new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in 100 different languages. We believe if we'll do our part in broadcasting on television, through website, social media, and the app, publishing books and CDs, that God will do His part and make sure that the message lands in the right place at the right time. Would you like to join us in this mission to strengthen the body of Christ internationally? Your monthly offering will help pastors and leaders around the world. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org to become a World Missions Partner today. Download the Mark Hankins Ministries app today. On the app, you can watch our TV show, listen to the radio program, read the daily devotional, and see where Mark and Trina will be. You can stay connected to Mark Hankins Ministries wherever you are. Download the app today on any iOS, Android, or Windows device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries and start feeding your faith today. Thank you for watching. 